Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the One Mix 4, which is a little laptop from a company called One Netbook. And when I say little, it's got a 10.1 inch display. It weighs just about 1.7 pounds. It's a pretty compact machine, but it's also a fairly powerful one and also a fairly versatile one. It's got a 360 degree hinge that allows you to flip the screen over and use it in tent mode or stand mode or tablet mode. It's got an uh, Intel Tiger Lake processor, two USB 4 ports, a micro SD card reader, and a USB uh, Type-C port, power button with an integrated fingerprint sensor, and a headphone jack. So let's go ahead and turn it on, or log in here with the fingerprint, fingerprint, and I'll show you a little bit of what you can do here. Uh, so. As you've probably noticed already, we've got a touchscreen display. It's a high resolution screen. It's 2560 by 1600 pixels, uh, which is pretty sharp. And um, at the sort of 100% scaling, everything would look incredibly tiny and a little bit difficult to see. Um, but out of the box, I think the display settings are set to somewhere closer to 200 or 250. And I find that 200 or 175 is actually pretty comfortable. So I've got it at 175 right now because for work purposes, I like being able to open up multiple windows side by side. And this gives you a reasonable amount of space to sort of have one thing in one window and something else in the other window. Um, for purposes of this video, I'm going to switch to 200% just so things are a little bit clearer and easier to see on the screen. Now, of course, in laptop mode, um, it works pretty much like a general purpose computer, and that's what it is. It's smaller than most laptops, but it is uh, just about as powerful as a lot of current generation machines. And what's interesting about that is that this particular model is powered by an Intel Core i5 1130G7 processor. Now, the 1130 is theoretically a little bit less powerful than the 1135 that you'll find in more mainstream 13-inch and larger laptops. but in terms of benchmark tests, I found that they're pretty comparable, and this is actually much faster than a lot of other laptops that I've tested that uh, have 10th generation or 8th generation chips that consume much more power. So it's got a chip that uses around 7 to 10 watts of power most of the time. It can peak up to uh, 15 or 25 for a very short period and then come back down. But in terms of overall performance, it just feels like a laptop. Um, I've had no trouble using it for most of the things that I do with a laptop. So I've played games, I've done work, um, and I haven't had any real problems doing any of those things. Uh, let's just show you here a little bit of video playback from YouTube. So this is at 1080p, no problem. Let's do... Scrap a little royalty-free 4K video. So for media playback, not a problem. Uh, in terms of multitasking, let's open up GIMP, which is a pretty slow loading application most of the time and seems to load pretty quickly right now. Let's do a little word processing, and, you know, no problem sort of running with multiple applications open at the same time. Um, now, what's a little bit unusual about this device? Well, there's a couple of things that are unusual about it. One is, oops, gonna close that. Uh, one is that there is no camera. So we've got these slim displays, uh, slim bezels around the screen, and that allows for a roughly 90% screen to body ratio. But because of the fact that there isn't a camera, it's not gonna be something that you would use for uh, video conferencing. Now there is a microphone, but it's not a particularly great sounding microphone. So you could make voice recordings or use it for voice calls 
but this is what it sounds like when I make a voice recording. And let's go ahead and stop that. So that was pretty quiet. I don't know if you heard it. I'm going to crank up the volume. So it's really pretty noisy. And I think part of the problem is that the microphone, uh, it's not a far field voice detection microphone. You have to get pretty close to it. And it's picking up the sound of the fan as we go. Now the fan just turned off, but uh, it brings in air through, uh, through a vent on the bottom, blows it out through the back. And most of the time the fan is not particularly loud, but it's kind of a high pitched whining sound that's not incredibly pleasant. But you can um, crank up the fan by hitting function and tab. So it runs faster and helps keep the system a little bit cooler. So that could help with performance, but it makes it much, much noisier. So I think at sort of the regular fan level, it's if you're playing music or doing something else, you might not notice it. Um, but if you do try to sort of go into overdrive, you might get better performance, but you'll definitely notice that fan sound. Um, in terms of overall performance, as I mentioned, it, uh, it runs relatively cool, but the computer has a fairly small battery. So uh, with uh, around 38 watt hours, it runs for maybe four, four and a half hours of general purpose work, the way that I work as a blogger, which involves a lot of using the Chrome web browser and uh, GIMP and Irfan View for image editing, maybe playing some videos. Um, for just straight up video playback, I've set the screen brightness to something like 50% and I played YouTube video until the battery died and it got around six hours and 20 minutes. So it's not stellar, but depending on what you do, uh, six plus hours is definitely achievable. Uh, if you wanted to play games, it's probably gonna you know, uh, offer even less time than that. It does have enough graphics horsepower to play some older games. I tried Assassin's Creed Syndicate and uh, only managed to get around 10 to 15 frames per second. But Batman Arkham Asylum was able to run at closer to 60 frames per second. And you can find more details in the written version of this review at lilliputing.com. Um, overall, the, the design is pretty nice. It's not pocket size like some other mini PCs that we've seen from One Netbook and other companies in recent years, but it is compact. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, it's barely wider than the display itself. It weighs just about 1.7 pounds. It's hard to find a lot of notebooks with keyboards that are close to full size that are this light. Now, when I say close to full size, there are a couple of quirks in the keyboard area that takes some getting used to. So I'll show you a little bit of the typing experience here. And this is a little imperfect because I'm trying to type around the camera. I'm not going to go through this whole test, but I'll show you what typing looks like. So, you know, I can type pretty close to full speed, and in a typical typing test, I find I get somewhere around 83 words per minute, which is a little bit lower than the 90 to 100 words per minute that I could get on a full-size keyboard. The stumbling blocks, I think, are partly because some of the keys are, or the letter keys are spaced a little bit more closely together than I like, uh, even though they're all generally full size. And then something that really does take some getting used to is the location of these apostrophe, semicolon, and, um, and quotation mark buttons and colon buttons they're to the right of the space bar, whereas on most keyboards, they're going to be up here next to the, uh, the L, I believe. But unlike some other earlier machines from one netbook that weren't quite as wide, uh, you've got a full-size caps lock key instead of it being attached to the A key. You've got a, a full tab key. Uh, so for the most part, touch typing is really not that difficult. Now there is, uh, you know, these number keys are only half height and the function keys are half height. And that's partly to make room for a touchpad. There is this multi-touch touchpad that supports, um, you know, two finger tapping and three finger uh, maximize and minimize and other sort of swipe gestures. Some earlier devices from one netbook were so small that there wasn't room for a touchpad and instead they had a little optical touch sensor. This is a big upgrade, I would say. So uh, overall, in terms of having a small but capable computer, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, now, as I mentioned, we do have two USB 4 ports on this side, and either of these can be used to charge the device. So it comes with a 45 watt power adapter that looks like this. It's uh, a little bit bigger than a, than a typical phone charger, but it's basically just a USB adapter. 
and it should work with any third-party adapters that also support 45 watt uh, USB power delivery. In fact, I was also able to use it with a power bank, which I would show you, but the power bank's plugged into my phone that I'm using to record this right now. But if you have a third power third-party power bank, um, like one of those big USB batteries, you should be able to use that to run this as well, and that works just fine. Um, now, something else that I want to show you is that we've come a long way in 10-inch mini laptops. This is a 10-inch laptop from around 2008 or so. This is the Asus EPC-1000H that I picked up uh, about 12, 12, 13 years ago. It has a 10 inch screen as well, but you can see that it's got a much thicker body. Now it does have full-sized uh, headphone and, and microphone jacks and um, full-size USB. You don't need to use a dongle, but it is just substantially larger, weighs almost twice as much at 3.2 pounds. And um, you can sort of see the difference in what we're looking at there. If we come around the front, you can see that the new, newer 10 inch laptops are much, much smaller. And if I open up the screen, I think it becomes even more apparent. We've got these large bezels. Uh, we do have a keyboard that is pretty comfortable to type on, but we've got a tiny touchpad. And overall, just a significant difference in the profile. Let me angle this so you can even get the whole thing. So on the left is what a 10 inch computer looked like uh, more than a decade ago. And on the right is what one looks like today. Uh, now, we do have a camera on this one, and we don't on this one, but overall, I think it's, uh, it's pretty impressive to see what's, capable, what's possible now. Now, another thing I guess I will show you is this HP Spectre X360, which is a 13.3-inch laptop, and the main thing I want to show you here is that the keyboards are actually pretty similar in terms of size and layout, but... We don't have uh, those awkward located, uh, locations for the colon and apostrophe buttons. We've got a little bit more spacing between the keys. And since this is a convertible, I can show you that by actually placing them side by side. So you can see there's just a little bit more space, it feels like, between the Q and the W and the W and the E. So I do find typing to be a little bit more comfortable on a larger machine like the HP Spectre, but you know, this is something that weighs closer to two and a half or three pounds versus 1.7 pounds and is just a little bit less compact. And I think what's really nice about having something that is smaller is that it sort of falls into the category of a take anywhere device. You can throw it in your bag. It doesn't weigh much. It doesn't take up much space. And if you think you might need a laptop where you're going, then you've got one. Uh, I would appreciate longer battery life, but the fact that you can use a USB power bank or that you can stop and charge it with a fast charger pretty quickly really does come in handy. And the fact that one netbook opted to use the lower power 1130 G7 instead of 1135 G7 probably also helps extend that battery life just a little bit more as well. Uh, last thing I should probably point out is that it is possible to run uh, Ubuntu or other Linux distributions. The out-of-the-box experience is not quite perfect. I had some issues with uh, screen rotation with Ubuntu, but in laptop mode, uh, it works just fine. And I actually have a separate video that you can check out that shows what Ubuntu looks like after just a tiny, tiny bit of configuration. Um, Wi-Fi works, everything else uh, works, audio works. Audio is something that I did mean to uh, point out, which I think we saw this a little bit in that video we just watched, but there is a, a single mono speaker. It is not incredibly loud and it uh, doesn't sound great. So cranked up, it's a kind of distorted. It just sounds kind of far away. It sounds like it's off center. I think if you wanted to use this for a lot of media consumption, you'd probably want to invest in external speakers or headphones or wireless headphones or something along those lines. Um, in terms of uh, overall performance, uh, I, I used this for a complete work day one day. I spent half the day using it as a laptop unplugged, uh, working from my dining room, and I spent the other half of the day plugging in a USB dongle that allowed me to uh, connect an external display and keyboard and mouse. And I really had no problem using it as a drop-in desktop replacement. So, um, you know, you can just plug in adapters, and you get access to things like full-sized Ethernet, full-sized uh, HDMI, 
uh, and USB type A ports. And having the ability to do that with either of the ports on the side here uh, really does make a difference. The USB 3 port on the other side is also a USB-C port. It does not support charging, but it does support um, keyboards, mice, other peripherals. Didn't work with HDMI when I tried to plug in my display, although these two did. So um, you might be able to plug in some displays, but the displays that I've tested it with don't work with this particular port. So it's only got three USB ports. They're all USB Type-C, so you might need adapters depending on the accessories you plan to use. But overall, um, you know, I think having three different ones having support for dongles, um, you know, does, does make it useful. Last thing that I want to mention is that it does support pen input. So you could flip it over, uh, you know, hold it like a tablet and use a pen to write or draw on it. Unfortunately, I do not have a pen that I can use with it right now, so I wasn't able to test this fully. But uh, in terms of finger input, um, it is something that you could um, use to, you know, scribble or do note taking. I don't know why this is looking a little funny right now. Um, so you can use it as a handheld device as well as using it as a laptop. Or again, you know, if you wanted to watch a video or uh, use it as a reading device or something else, you could prop it up in the kitchen looking at recipes. Uh, so I think the multi-mode functionality is even more useful on small devices with 10-inch screens than they are on larger computers like 13-inch or 15-inch laptops. So that's the one mix uh, four from one netbook. I don't think officially they're calling it the one mix for yoga, even though a lot of their previous devices had yoga in the name. It uh, sells for about 1050 and up. That's the, the price that it's going for as of the time that I'm shooting this video. So it's not an inexpensive device. Um, you know, early netbooks tended to have a reputation for being cheap. I'm not sure if I would call this a netbook. I really refer to it as a mini laptop. And it is a mini laptop with the kind of hardware that you would find from a nice mid-range or even a premium device. Uh, it's got an aluminum shell. It's you know thin, it's light, it's powerful. Uh, I don't think 1050 is necessarily unreasonable, uh, but it is something that you sort of have to ask yourself, do I want to spend that kind of money on a laptop that's so much smaller than a typical one? It could be a laptop replacement for some people, but I tend to think of devices in this category as maybe your second or third computer, the one that you do throw in a bag and take with you anywhere. But the fact that it doesn't have a camera, the fact that it uh, doesn't get stellar battery life means that it's probably going to be something that's going to be more secondary for some people than primary. So $1,000, I think, is, is perfectly reasonable for a laptop that can do all that this one can, but it is kind of a high price for a secondary machine. So that's something that you're going to have to decide. The entry-level model also only has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. It is available with up to 16 gigs of memory and a terabyte of storage, I believe. But, of course, you'll have to pay more for those. And if you were to flip it over and remove a series of tiny screws on the bottom of the device, you could remove the back cover and upgrade the storage on your own. It's a M22280 uh, PCIe NVMe solid state storage, but the memory does not seem to be upgradable. At least uh, I couldn't find any easy way to upgrade it. Uh, there's a couple of things that are hidden underneath some adhesive that I didn't pry open um, because I just didn't want to risk damaging the system. So you can find some pictures at lilliputing.com that show what this device looks like when it is opened up. So that's the One Mix 4 from One Netbook. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.